This is Twit. I, I, I titled this one ZYFWP slash capital P lower. Oh, that's all lowercase, by the way. Then we have capital P lowercase r, capital O lowercase w, exclamation point A, capital N underscore lowercase f, capital X lowercase p. What is that? If you just listen to this, you now have the ability to log in to more than 100,000 Zykecell oh. firewalls, VPN oh. gateways, access point controllers on the internet. Oh. It's uh, unbelievable. Another, because this also happened in 2016, another hard-coded admin privilege backdoor account has been found in more that affects more than 100,000 Zyxel devices that can grant attackers right now, they're on the internet, root access via either the SSH interface or the web admin panel. <laughs> and as ZDNet put it in their coverage, and I agree, they said the backdoor account discovered by a team of Dutch security researchers from from I control, EYE control, is considered as bad as it gets in terms of vulnerabilities. So owners of these devices are, I mean, and you know, if you, you'll probably hopefully our listeners, if they have any Zyxel devices, uh, by all means update. They are advised to update systems as soon as time permits and in any event to immediately, if not sooner, disable external access if you can. And it's not clear to me that it's possible for me for reasons I'll explain in a second to the devices SSH and web admin access. Until that's done, anyone from DDoS botnet operators to state-sponsored hacking groups and ransomware gangs could abuse this back door, and I guarantee you they're at it right now, to access vulnerable devices and pivot to internal networks for additional attacks. Uh, and here we are, 2021, right? No one can any longer be naive enough to imagine that, that, that these back doors would exist, be publicly known, be fully documented now. I just read out the username and password because it's no secret, unfortunately. Uh, it's going to happen. So the device models affected include many of Zyxel's top products from its line of business grade, not home devices, as was the case in 2016, business grade devices, which are typically deployed throughout private enterprise and government networks. The Advanced Threat Protection <laughs> ATP series, uh, which is used primarily as a firewall, except apparently it, ha it has a now publicly known backdoor. The Unified Security Gateway, the USG series, typically used as a private firewall, fire, pri as, a, as a hybrid firewall and VPN gateway. The USG Flex series, used also as a hybrid firewall and VPN gateway. The VPN series, which is obviously a VPN gateway, and the NXC series, which is used as a, as a wide area network access point controller, a, a WLAN. So since the roles of these devices place them at the internet facing edge of a company's network, once they're compromised, attackers are able to pivot and launch attacks against internal hosts. And again, after what, after what we've been through in 2020, one should imagine that this is going on. So at this time, patches are available from Zyxel for four of the five device families, the ATP, USG, USG Flex, and the VPN series. Patches for the NXC series are expected this Friday, January 8th. Um, in an interview with ZDNet last week, IoT security researcher Ankit uh, Anubhav said, 
that Zyxel should have learned its lesson from a previous incident that took place in 2016. Our listeners may recall, since we discussed it at the time. Back then, it was tracked as CVE 2016-10401. Back then, Zyxel devices contained a secret backdoor mechanism that allowed anyone to elevate any account on a Zyxel device to root using the super user password ZYAD5001. Ankit told ZDNet, he said, it was surprising to see yet another hard-coded credential in Zyxel products, especially since Zyxel is well aware that the last time this happened, it was abused by several botnets. He noted that the ZYAD5001 password is, password is still present in the arsenal of most password attack-based IoT botnets. They'll give it a go on the off chance that it may still work and give them root access. But of course, this time the situation is much worse. While the 2016 backdoor was a powerful elevation of privilege, it still required attackers to first gain access to a low-privileged account on a Zyxel device so they could then elevate it to root. Today's backdoor grants attackers direct access to the device without any preconditions. And Ankit observed that, he said, quote, unlike the previous exploit, which was used for Telnet access only, Today's vulnerability requires even less expertise since it's possible to directly use the credentials on the port 443 web panel. And finally, the targets will be far more interesting to higher end attackers. The 2016 flaw impacted home routers, whereas today's mess affects enter enterprise grade devices. The Dutch researcher who found the back door in his own Zyxel USG40 performed an inner, oh, and by the way, he was, he simply dumped the firmware and looked at it. And there were the credentials sitting in the firmware exposed for anyone to see. So this also begs the question, who else may already have found this and known about it and, and for how long? The good news is a reputable researcher saw it, found it, verified it, uh, and reported it responsibly to Zyxel. Um, uh, I have a, a link to Zyxel's vulnerability report where they, where they titled, titled it uh, Zyxel Security Advisory for Hard-Coded Credential Vulnerability. And of course, this can't be a surprise. It's, you know, they did it, right? It's in their firmware. So the story of why this happened is, in my mind, as interesting as the fact that it did. So get a load of what Zyxel says in this uh, credential vulnerability report. They said, Zyxel has released a patch for the hard-coded credential vulnerability of firewalls and access point controllers recently reported by researchers from I in Netherlands. Users are advised to install the applicable firmware updates for optimal protection. <laughs> yeah. And they said, what is the vulnerability? A hard-coded credential vulnerability was identified in the ZY... FWP user account in some Zyxel firewalls and access point controllers. The account was designed to deliver automatic firmware updates to connected access points through FTP. Okay. Then they said, what versions are vulnerable? What should you do? After a thorough investigation, <laughs> which, you know, uh, okay, they said, we've identified the vulnerable products 
and good for them, and are releasing firmware patches to address the issue as shown in the table below. For optimal protection, optimal protection, mind you, we urge users to install the applicable updates. They said for those not listed, they are not affected. Contact your local Zyxel support team if you require further assistance. Okay, well, so at least it can be patched. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, what is wrong with this picture? This doesn't really pass the smell test. They claim to have deliberately hard-coded, knowingly, right, remote admin access credentials throughout their enter grade, their, their enterprise grade product line for the purpose of delivering automatic firmware updates to connected access points through FTP. Okay, so maybe they're just extremely inept or perhaps they're not telling the truth. For one thing, the FTP port is not the one that's open. It's the HTTPS port, which is open and authenticates on these login credentials. So more than anything else, this looks very much like an on-demand backdoor access to more than 100,000 enterprises. And, you know, you wonder if Western users should worry that Zyxel is a Chinese network equipment manufacturer located in Taiwan. I don't know, but uh, it just really is. I mean, you almost have to say that this could not have been deliberate because if it were a, a, an attempt to put a, a deliberate backdoor into their products, they would have done a better job than just having the username and password in plain text in the code. Um, I guess actually the researcher did say that it was a hashed password. So he apparently, you know, ran the hash through a hash a breaker in order to determine what it was. But the point is, it wasn't difficult for him to discover, and anybody else who was curious could have done the same thing. Uh, you know, and my also, my feeling is, if you want to know, if anyone wants to know how to do automatic updates, you know, just look around. Update clients, like they're saying these, these enterprise-grade security products are don't hold listening ports open waiting for updates to be sent in. No, no, no one does that. Update clients periodically phone home to check in with the mothership to see whether anything has happened recently. You know, that's what windows does, right? You know, that way no listening ports are ever externally exposed. And the only thing a client needs to do upon receiving an update is to use a built-in public key to decrypt a hash of the file to verify its authenticity before copying it into its own firmware. Only the authorized publisher of the product's firmware would have the matching private key that's used to encrypt the updated firmware's hash and include it for verification of the firmware's authenticity, right? So, you know, this is easy to do. But instead, Zyxel is saying, well, you know, we've got servers with open ports listening for incoming connections and they, and they will accept them if they authenticate with this username and password, which is in our firmware. I mean, that if that's true, that's insanely wrong and if if they're saying this is the way we're handling updates is that we're we're going to be like listening for some sort of a ftp push update delivery system onto our clients uh you know i mean if that's the case nobody should ever be using zyxel equipment again and in fact you know just the fact that they seem unable to do this in a secure fashion should put anyone off of them I used to like them. You know, the hardware seems solid and well-constructed. I have a Zyxel dumb internet switch around here somewhere, I, but, you know, I haven't used it for years because it was a 10-100. But anyway, uh, they have apparently 
failed to learn from their previous fiasco in 2016. Uh, and I'd stay as far, as far away from these guys as I could. If you do own their equipment, by all means, go get an update. Apparently, it's up to you to do so, despite the fact that they are claiming that their products auto update by, you know, receiving, can, you know, so what does Zyxel have a list of all the IPs of all their equipment out on the public internet and, and calls them with updates? I don't know. This is, yeah, as, again, as I said, it, yeah. it does not pass. A lot the of times those test. back it's doors like, are left in for, you know, in factory testing or I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It does. It's yeah. The bad news is not, a hundred, more seem, than a hundred thousand of them. Doesn't seem out nefarious. There. I mean, what, uh, like, what would be the point in doing that? Yeah, maybe it just. I mean, or maybe they don't want it to look at nefarious, so they did a really clumsy it's job. A bad of it. job of it. You know, it's like, oh well, it obviously clear, wasn't by on the purpose. Because look how stupid we they're are. They're Taiwanese. They're not Chinese, so it's not like this is uh, okay. you know a communist okay. China plot to spy on us they're taiwanese so i yeah i don't know what the motivation would be who knows it's a bad yep. practice obviously <laughs> yes not well designed technology